Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to start a successful photography blog. So everything that we're going to cover today can be found right here. Basically, we're going to talk about what is a photography blog and I'm actually going to tell you why you should niche down and how to niche down so that you can actually grow faster with your blog. After that, I'm going to show you step by step how to get and install web hosting so that people can see your website. In addition, I am going to show you how to install WordPress, how to get a free and premium WordPress theme, important changes that you absolutely need to make on your website and how to start writing. In addition, I'm going to show you how to make money with your blog, why you need to share your content on social media in the very beginning, and about how many blog posts you need to write before you determine if your website is a success or failure. Now, be sure to check out the first three links in the description because those three links are the links that I will refer to throughout this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. What is a photography blog? Now, a photography blog is simply you creating written content to answer a question. People are coming to the internet because they have questions about everything. And in this case, they want to know about photography. Maybe they want to know about angles. Maybe they want to know about lighting. Whatever it is, they're coming in and they're asking questions. Let me show you an example of a successful photography blog. This is called BehindTheShutter.com. And this is a blog all about photography. If you look, they're talking about headshots. They're talking about lighting, a wedding. They're talking about all sorts of stuff. Now, when you first get started with your blog, you need to pick a niche. And when I mean pick a niche, I think you should talk about different categories or types of blogs. For example, are you going to do portrait photography, fashion, sports? Are you going to do drone photography? In my opinion, when you get started with a blog, you have a brand new blog and you have no domain authority. No one knows about you. No one trusts you. You need to pick a niche and you need to become an expert in that field. And to help illustrate that point, I'm going to jump over to Ahrefs. It's a keyword tool that I use to help me find keywords. So if I just type in photography, you're going to see that this is really competitive. On a scale from 0 to 100, the keyword difficulty for the term photography is 92. If we look at the matching terms here, you're going to see that there are different sub niches right here that you could potentially start writing on and start generating leads and sales. For example, if you look at this landscape photography, that could be interesting. Real estate photography, that could be interesting as well, or even something like drone photography. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to copy landscape photography because that kind of piqued my interest. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to paste in landscape photography. And we see that the keyword difficulty for landscape photography, if we go back to the overall, is less difficult, so it's only hard, 50 out of 100. If we look at the matching terms, you're gonna see a lot of green and a little bit of yellow, which means you could write on all of these topics. So what you'd wanna do as a brand new blog or website, you, you wanna find keywords that have difficulty of 10 or less. For example, large format landscape, landscape photography. You might wanna try and find different questions to answer. Uh, these are all good ways to start building authority urban landscape photography. These are different things that you could answer and solve and start building traffic. The landscape photography niche has over 10,000 keywords and gets 49 monthly searches. One thing you could do is you could look for different questions to answer about landscape photography. You could even look up and write about different terms within landscape photography and start getting traffic. And so that's what I mean by picking a niche and then niching down. So we know that our top level niche is about photography. Then we're going to write about landscape photography. So that's kind of our, our sub niche. And then our sub sub niche is different aspects of landscape photography. As you can see, there is some opportunity there as well. Now, if we jump back over to our slide deck, we've picked a niche, we've niched down. Now we need to get web hosting. Web hosting allows us to show our, our website to anybody and everyone across the world. What you'll need to do is you'll need to work with a web hosting company and they're going to actually host your website on their servers. Now a server is basically a hard drive that's connected to the internet. And what they're going to do is they're going to make it so that your website is accessible. And what you'll need to do is you'll actually need to rent hard drive or server space from them. If you click the first link in the description, they'll actually walk you through that step by step. And when you sign up with the first link in the description, you'll actually get a domain name for free. Now a domain name is important because if we look here, this is the domain name for the website that we just referenced, behindtheshutter.com. That is how humans will reference your site behind the shutter.com. And so again, when you click that first link, you'll get a free domain name for the first year. After that, you'll obviously have to pay for it. Now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through step by step how to get web hosting and pick your domain name when you click that first link. So it only takes like five or six minutes really to get everything set up. And I'm actually gonna show you how to do that right now. 
When you click that link, you'll be taken to this website where you'll go ahead and click get started. What I recommend is to click the first one on the far left, the basic plan, if you're just getting started with a website. As you can see, there are a number of options, but click that, click select, and then move on. Here, you're going to create a domain name. If you have one in mind, you can type it in here like you see that I do. What I recommend is try and find a domain name that's going to be related to your niche. Now, what I do is I type in a domain name that I know is already taken. When it's taken, you're gonna get this error. What you can then do is go back and try different domains. Now make sure again, you wanna pick one that's related to your niche. Click next, and then you're gonna see a green box that says that it's approved. The next step is simply to go through and enter in your contact information. Make sure that you, when you scroll down here, make sure that you leave all of the settings on. Um, but Again, enter in your contact information, the settings right here where it says domain privacy, leave all of this checked. If you don't leave it checked, you're gonna get people reaching out to you, uh, spamming you, emailing you, trying to get you to sign up for web hosting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and sign up and then jump back to you once I sign on and move to the next step. All right, so I have signed up and I'm going to go ahead and set up my website initially. Just create a simple username and password, make sure it meets the requirements there and then move on. Um, make sure that you write it down too. Write it down in a safe spot so that you have it and you remember it because it can be a pain to go ahead and get everything back. You're gonna have to enter in like some vital information, but just make sure that you write it down. It's really easy and really simple. Now, one thing that I do wanna note is that this part is not sped up at all. This is actual real time, and you can see that you'll go from absolutely nothing to a complete website in less than probably 10 minutes. And once you click submit, you're gonna move on to the next step where you get to log in. Here is where you're actually going to start creating your WordPress website. Now, the great thing is, is Bluehost really does everything for you and it's really simple. So again, I'm not speeding this up at all, and I want you to see what it really takes to create a website. Bluehost is gonna do a little bit of work in the background for you, and we're just gonna actually click on skip this step. This one, first one I clicked on start a blog, but for the next step, just click skip because we know what we're doing, and I'm actually gonna tell you what to do so that we can get up and running. Click get started right here on the left-hand side, and then move on. Just click skip here and click skip here. And then just pick the first one in the far left. Make sure that you're picking a free theme because they'll charge you. They have both free and premium themes, which I'll talk about in just a moment. So right now it's actually creating your WordPress website. In just a few moments, you're gonna click on log in to WordPress on the right hand side there. You'll see it in just a second. And then we can actually start looking at some basic configurations. All right, so we click log in and now we actually have a WordPress website. What may need to happen is you may need to click refresh a few times to get it to, to work, but now we have our website, as you can see. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna log in and delete a few plugins, because right now it has the coming soon, and so if someone tried to get to your website at this moment, it's gonna say coming soon to them, even though we can see it. This is what your WordPress website looks like, but for everyone else outside of your network, it's gonna say coming soon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to plugins eventually, and we're going to delete some of the plugins that we don't need. Now I talk a little bit about plugins later on, but um, plugins add additional features and functionality. We are going to deactivate the Bluehost as well as the um, other plugins that are already activated. And then we can go through and make the necessary changes, which I'll cover in just a moment. So we're gonna deactivate them and then delete them. Now you wanna make sure that you only have the plugins that you're using on your website. The more plugins you have, the slower your website's going to respond and, and function, and you're gonna lose out on ranking. So make sure you have a lean setup, very few plugins, and then move on. As you can see right now, I'm just simply deleting some stuff that you don't need. Uh, if you want to, you could keep them, but obviously, if, if you're just getting started, you don't need this other stuff. What's more important is the themes that we're gonna talk about in just a moment, as well as getting writing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete, delete those, deactivate them. And then we're actually gonna start moving on to settings, which you see right here. All right, so let's go ahead and make some changes that we absolutely have to make so that you can start getting traffic. The first thing that you wanna do is you wanna change your site title. Your site title is going to be the title of your website. You can make this basically your domain name. For example, my domain name is Web Hosting Rewind, and you can see that's my site title. And then the tagline is basically what your website's all about in a very succinct manner. 
as you can see here, mine says, get the latest news and info on all things web hosting. What you want to do is make sure that yours is relevant to your niche. For example, if you are creating content about makeup, you can say, come here for the latest tips and tricks for all things makeup. Next, you want to make sure that your WordPress address is HTTPS and not HTTP. Make sure your site address is HTTPS as well. And then the administration email should automatically be set. Um, uncheck the membership so that anyone can register. Make sure that this is unchecked. Um, if we scroll down here, you want to change your time zone to your time zone. There are all sorts of them here. Next, you want to make sure that you have your date format set to the way you want, and then go ahead and click save. If we go down to writing, there isn't anything in writing that we need to change. After that, we're going to go to reading. In reading, very important, you want to make sure that your homepage displays to your latest post. That's the first thing. And the second one is you want to make sure that your search engine visibility is unchecked. Do not check this. Discourage search engines from indexing this site. You do not want this. Because if this is checked, people aren't going to be able to find your website. And everything that we do after this is going to be a waste. So go ahead and click save. This should be unchecked. Next, if we go down to discussion, there really isn't anything that we need to change here. Media, we can leave this as is. And then permalinks is going to be really important. Right now, your permalinks are set to plain. You want to change it to post name. This is done for search engine optimization. What's going to happen is when we create a new blog post, we are going to make it so that it's search engine optimized. We're going to use the keyword in our title. And that keyword is going to show up right here as well. And this is called search engine optimization. Make sure that it's set to post name and then go ahead and click save. And really that's everything that you need to do to make sure that you start getting traffic. All right. So now that we have installed WordPress, we've installed a free WordPress theme. We're actually going to go back and install a premium theme. I'm going to tell you why you want to do that in just a moment. We've made the important changes that we absolutely need to make so that our website can be seen and we can start getting visitors and eventually start making money. Now, right now you have a free WordPress theme. That WordPress theme is basic. It has no features, very little functionality. It can work, but I recommend that you upgrade to a premium WordPress theme. A premium WordPress theme is going to change the functionality. It's going to give you some additional features and it's just going to look nicer. If we look at this website behind the shutter.com, this is a WordPress theme. It has a lot more features and functionality and it just looks inviting. What you're going to do is you're going to click the second link in the description and it's going to take you to this website. What we're going to do is we're just going to search search photography for WordPress themes and you're going to see there's a bunch of themes out there that you could download and implement right into your website and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second but if you look at these themes they all have additional features and functionalities maybe they are going to help you show off your photo collection maybe they're going to help you sell photos just go through take a look and find one that you like the prices range between 19 and 99 dollars you can find one that meets your budget once you find one that you like, you're going to press this button to add it to the cart. Once you add it to the cart, you're going to check out. And after you pay for the WordPress theme, you are going to download that theme to your computer. It's going to come as a zip file. You are going to unpack that zip file and there's going to be a second zip file. You're going to take that second zip file and you're actually going to install it into your WordPress website. And to do that, you're going to go to appearance. You're going to click on themes. When you click on themes, you are going to click on add new. When you click on add new, you are going to click on upload theme. When you click on upload theme, you are going to drag and drop that second zip file right here, or you can manually find it by clicking choose file. Regardless of the way that you do it, you're simply going to click on install now and then activate. And then you're going to have a brand new WordPress theme. Now that we have taken care of that, let's go ahead and start writing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click on posts. We're going to click on add new. And this is how we're going to start writing. Again, we're going to answer right now, how long should our blog post be? And how do I start writing? What I like to do is I like to take my keyword here. For example, let's say we want to write on how to sell a landscape photography. I'm going to copy this right here and I'm going to paste this in Google. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a look and see how long the blog posts are for the pages that rank on the first page. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open this up just like this and I am going to just really just take a look and see how long the blog post is. My guess is this one's probably about 2,500 words. If we right click, we go word counter. Okay, 2,200 words. So what I would do is I would make my blog post about 2,500 words. The best way to 
write a blog post and how long your blog post should be really is you want to make sure that it is as long or if not longer than your competitors and it's answering additional questions and to answer additional questions we are going to go back over to our blog post first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to paste in our our keyword this is a keyword or, or keyword phrase that people are looking up and what i'd like to do is i like to take 10 or 15 minutes and do a just a quick brainstorming session in my brainstorming session i do who what when where why and how okay and the reason why i do this is because it's going to help us develop ideas that we're going to add right into our blog post it's going to help us answer our customers question because remember people are coming to the internet they're looking up blogs because they have questions that they want answered and so if we can answer questions completely and fully we can make money and we can start building a customer or client base and so what we're going to do here is i'm just going to take if I'm writing my own blog post, I'm going to take 10 minutes and just jot down some questions that I am going to eventually put into a blog post. I'm going to say maybe when is the best time to sell landscape photos. Now here, remember, you do not need to worry about giving your um, giving your spelling correct because you're just brainstorming. It's more important that you get words on the paper or in this case on the computer so that you can really just develop your ideas in the next step where to sell landscape photos why should you not sell landscape photos now what i do after about 10 minutes 10 or 15 minutes of brainstorming i keep all of the good questions for my actual blog post and I delete the ones that don't make any sense or aren't actually going to address the question that is our keyword. And so what I'll do is I'll go here and I'll turn this into an H2. And when I turn this into an H2, I'm gonna come down here and I'm just gonna answer the question. The best time to sell landscape photos is you know during Christmas, we'll say. Obviously you wanna do some research and make sure that the answers you're providing are correct but you get the idea you want to make sure again that your answer your blog post is at least as long maybe even longer should be longer than what's already on the market because you are you want to add to the internet and so what you're going to do is you're just going to write answer the question completely and then click publish once you click publish your website your blog post is going to be alive for the world to see and read now if we jump back over to our slide deck the next step is to learn how to make money with it now Hopefully one of the reasons why you're starting a blog is so that you can make money and it can be a very good opportunity and there are a number of ways to make money. One way that you can make money with your blog or website is to have ads. Now I'm just looking at these to see if they have ads on their, on their website. It doesn't look like it, but you can have ads placed automatically on your website. In the very beginning, you can work with a company called Google AdSense. And the great thing with Google AdSense is when you sign up, it's actually through Google. Obviously when you work with them, you sign up ads are placed automatically on each blog post so you don't have to do any configuration it's really easy now when you get started with google adsense you are not going to make a bunch of money up front it's going to be very little it's going to be pennies on the dollar once you start getting significant traffic though you can move on to other ad networks like ezoic mediavine media.net ad thrive there are a bunch of a bunch of premium ad networks out there that you could work with and start making some money. But that's just one way. There, another way that you can make money is simply with affiliate marketing. Now, affiliate marketing is recommending or selling other people's products and services. When customers click on your affiliate links and buy the product that you're recommending, you can earn a commission. For example, the way that you would do affiliate marketing or one way that you could do affiliate marketing is you could sign up with Amazon Associates or Amazon.com and you could recommend different cameras. There are tons of affiliate programs out there. What you'd want to do is you'd want to find one that's relevant to your niche. Uh, for example, maybe drone photography. You want to go out and find different drone affiliate programs and you would sign up to become an affiliate. They're going to give you your unique affiliate links and then you're going to put them on your website. Now there are a ton of affiliate programs and the key to affiliate marketing is recommending products that are going to be congruent with your audience. They're going to be in line with your audience. If you are writing about drone photography, you should recommend drone, drone products, drones with cameras, um, and any associated products. It would not make sense that if you are talking about drone photography, and you're recommending basket weaving. Your customers aren't going to buy it. It's not gonna resonate. It won't make sense. Another way that you can make money is you can sell digital and physical products. Maybe you sell your own 
prints right from your website, you can do that as well. That's outside the scope of this video, but there are WordPress plugins that you can add right to your site to make it really easy. There are at least seven different ways that you can make money online and each one can be profitable independently, but you can make a lot of money when you combine them. So let's jump back over here. We've talked about how to make money. Next, you wanna share your content on social media. The reason why you wanna share your content in the beginning on social media is you're not going to get any organic traffic because Google doesn't trust your, your content yet. As you know, Google is in the game of making money and they're only going to show content that they trust, that they know works. And until you start getting traffic from Google, you wanna go out and share your content on relevant social media platforms like Reddit, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, anywhere where, where you're potential target audience is hanging out. You can go out and find relevant photography uh, subreddits and share it there as long as you have permission. Google will notice that you're driving traffic to your website and they'll actually speed up the process of getting your content ranked. So I think it's important in the very beginning that you share your content on any and every social media platform. You could even start your own Facebook group and share it there. Next, the question that I get a lot, the third question that I get a lot is about how many blog posts should I write in the very beginning? In my opinion, you should set a goal to write 50 blog posts before you make any decisions if your website's a success or failure. Now, the reason why you wanna write about 50 is because you wanna show Google that you're serious when it comes to creating content. A lot of people stop after 10 and it's it kind of dilutes or muddies the water. Another reason why you wanna aim for 50 is because you're gonna have 50 pieces of content about landscape photography or, or whatever your niche is. And that's gonna show Google and other readers and writers that you have authority. You know what you're talking about. You're, again, you're not just here for the short term. You have, you're building domain authority and you're attempting to build a real business. So I think 50 is a good number. Obviously you could do less than that, but the, the fewer blog posts you write, uh, the lower your results are going to be. So aim for 50. You can either write one blog post a day for 50 days or one blog post every other day for 100 days, but your goal should definitely be 50. Now, I encourage you to check out the three links in the description that we covered earlier today. Uh, we, the first link is for web hosting. The second link is for premium WordPress themes. And then the third link is for a free affiliate marketing course. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload my next video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.